Hey, what's happening guys? Uh, if you've been following the videos for a while, you know I always talk about tinning wires before you solder. And I always say solder flows where solder's been, so it's always best to tin, tin, tin. And I received a couple questions about it, so I figured I would do a quick video today to show you how I tin a wire, which is how I was taught by an instructor in the U.S. Navy 30-some years ago. Okay, so before we get to the proper way to do it, we're going to talk about the not proper way to do it. So if you've got your wire here and you've got it stripped, and oh God, I'm just going to assume that you would twist it first. I'd hope anyway. Then what I have seen a lot of people do is just take their soldering iron and just glob a big old glob of solder and run it like that. I mean, okay, yeah, it's tinned, but it ain't pretty. I mean, you can see the, the oxidation on there. So let me show you how I would do it. And we'll do, we'll do two wires. We'll tin them and we'll join them. Now, we already did a video on the Western Union Splice, so if you haven't seen that, check it out. Okay, so first of all, twist your wires. The direction of twist doesn't matter. Just twist them tightly. Now, I'm just putting them in here like this so you guys can get a good view. You don't have to have them this close together. Clean soldering iron tip. Just a touch of solder for thermal transfer. Then put the soldering iron on the wire, let it heat up for a few seconds, and whoops, when it's hot enough, capillary action will simply pull the solder into the wire. Then wipe off your tip. Do the other one. Remember, just a touch, a drop of solder. And like I said, it's just for thermal transfer. We're not trying to impart any solder to the wire. Let the wire heat up, and when it's ready, the solder will flow into the wire. Capillary action will cause the solder to be pulled into the wire. Next, you want to use a pair of flush cutters, nippers, whatever you want to call them, and cut off the end of the wire. Always cut off the end. So you have a nice flat spot. And then what I like to do is try and get them about the same length. I mean, we're not going with a micrometer here. Now, I know these are stubs, and I could have done it afterwards, but because I'm trying to show you, Always put your shrink wrap on before you solder the joint. Now, I'm just going to reflow these together. There will be enough mechanical strength in the wire that as long as you're not pulling on this, it's not going to come apart. So again, a dip of solder on there. Melt the wires. Use it, let the soldering iron melt them together. Try and hold it as steady as you can. And now they are flowed together. Put your shrink wrap on. A heat gun is the proper way to melt your shrink wrap. I don't have a heat gun here. So, just using a lighter. The lighter is about an inch under it. There you go. Pretty strong. Not as strong as the Western Union NASA Splice, but it'll do the job. It looks good. It's strong. It's a valid electrical joint. You won't have any problem with excess resistance. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. If you did, 
give me a thumbs up, feel free to comment, share, and don't forget to subscribe. Big thanks to all the patrons, and a big thanks to you for watching. That's it. I'm out. Peace. Thank you.